Here we want to look at a couple of examples where we prove that a sequence converges via the monotone sequence theorem. So let's recall that the monotone sequence theorem says that if we have a monotone sequence, in other words, it's a sequence that's always increasing or always decreasing, then that sequence converges if and only if it is bounded. Okay, so the first sequence that I wanna look at has the nth term given by three n over two n plus one. And I just wanna say, we'll use the monotone sequence theorem to show that this sequence converges, but generally at this point in this type of course, the only way to actually find the limit is via the epsilon n definition of the limit. Now in the future, we'll unlock those tricks that you use like in calculus two to see that this limit is equal to three halves, but those are not available to us yet. So like I said, all we can do is show that the sequence converges. Okay, so let's first of all, maybe write out a couple of terms to get some sort of idea for what it is bounded by, and then we'll prove that it's bounded. So notice the first term is going to be three over two plus one. In other words, the first term is equal to one. Now the second term is going to be equal to six over four plus one. In other words, it's six over five. Now the next term is gonna be nine over six plus one. In other words, it's nine over seven. So we have nine over seven. And now let's see what the next term is. So the next term is gonna be 12 over nine, which is the same thing as four over three. And let's see, after that we have 15 over 11 and so on and so forth. Okay, good. So it looks like this thing is increasing because these numbers are getting bigger as we go in that direction. So that's what we'll show first, that this sequence is increasing. In other words, it's monotonically increasing. And we'll do that by looking at the difference of a n plus one with a n. And if we can show that that's always positive, then clearly a n plus one is bigger than a n. So let's go ahead and do a little bit of a calculation on this. So that's gonna give us three times n plus one over two times n plus one plus one minus three times n over two n plus one. So now we'll simplify this left-hand term a bit. So that's gonna give us three n plus three over two n plus three. And then we're gonna have minus three n over two n plus one. Now we're gonna go ahead and give ourselves a common denominator. So notice the common denominator will just be the product of these two things. So I'll multiply this term by two n plus three and I'll multiply this term by two n plus one. Great. So now let's see what that gives us. So that's gonna give us, so this three n plus three times two n plus one, so that's gonna give us six n squared, and then we're gonna have plus three n, and then plus six n, so that's gonna be plus nine n, and then plus three, good. And then notice the second term is gonna be six n squared plus nine n. That's what we get from multiplying that out. Okay, and then that is all over this common denominator, two n plus three times two n plus one. Now let's see some stuff cancels in the numerator. Notice that this six n squared cancels with this six n squared, this nine n squared, sorry, this nine n cancels with this nine n, and we're just left with three over two n plus three 2n plus 1. But recall that n are natural numbers. So in other words, they're positive numbers, which means that this thing is always strictly bigger than 0. But notice if a n plus 1 minus a n is strictly bigger than 0, then that tells us that a n plus 1 is bigger than a n. And since this was done with an arbitrary n, we have shown that this is true for all natural numbers n. So we've just shown that this thing is indeed increasing. And I should say monotonically increasing. Okay, so now I'll clean up the board and we will show that it's bounded. So we just got done showing that our sequence was increasing. Now we're gonna show that it's bounded. And in order to show that it's bounded, we need to like have some sort of bound for it. And we'll use one as a lower bound because one is the very first term and this is an increasing uh, sequence. So that's kind of makes sense for the lower bound. 
and then we can cheat a little bit because we've probably taken calculus two and we can use three halves as an upper bound because we see that that's the actual limit. So, like I said, we're going to show this is bounded by proving the following claim and that is a n is between one and three halves for all natural numbers n. And we're going to prove this similarly to just how we proved that this thing was an increasing function. So maybe the proof of the first bit is that one is less than or equal to a n. And so we'll do that by just looking at a n minus one and showing that that is positive. But that's just going to be three n over two n plus one minus um, one, but let's rewrite one with a common denominator of two n plus one. So we can write that as two n plus one over two n plus one. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. Putting those two things together, we're gonna have three n minus two n, so we'll have n minus one over two n plus one. Okay, so that's equal to zero when n is equal to zero, but so that's equal to zero when n is equal to one, but if n is bigger than one, then that th thing is definitely positive. So notice we have this is bigger than or equal to zero for all natural numbers n. Great. So we've shown this part of the inequality right here. Now let's go ahead and establish the other part of the inequality as well, and we'll do that in the same way. We'll look at three halves minus a sub n, and do just a simple calculation. So I'm gonna go ahead and write this as three times two n plus one over two times two n plus one, kind of getting ahead of myself and finding a common denominator. And then minus a n, so I'll give that a common denominator um, as well, so I need to build the denominator up by two. So that's gonna be minus, so I've got six n in the numerator now, and now two times two n plus one in the denominator. Okay, so let's see what that gives us. So we have three times two n is six n minus six n is zero. So that gives us a one in the numerator. And then let's see what we have in the denominator. We have two times two n plus one, but that's most definitely bigger than zero. So what we have is that this part of the inequality is also true. And so that means we've established that this is bounded. And so now since this is an increasing sequence and it's a bounded sequence, we know that it converges. And like I said earlier, we just know that it converges now. We don't know what it converges to, although from calculus we know that it converges to three halves. And you could see that using the epsilon n definition for a limit. Okay, I'll clean up the board and we'll do one more. So for a second example, we're going to look at a recursively defined sequence. So it's defined by the first term, a1 is 4, and then after that the recursion hops in. So we've got a n plus 1 is equal to 1 half a n plus 1. And here we're taking n to be bigger than or equal to 1. So let's get an idea for how this goes. So a1 is 4, but now a2 is going to be 1 half times a1 plus 1, but that's 1 half times 4, that's 2 plus 1 is 3. Okay, and then let's notice that a3 is equal to 1 half a2, but a2 is equal to 3, so it's 1 half times 3 plus 1. So that's going to be 3 halves plus 1, and so that's equal to 5 halves. And now let's do one more maybe, so let's say a4, so that's going to be equal to 1 half times 5 halves plus 1. So that's 5 over 4 plus 1 but that's gonna give us nine over four. Great, so notice that these numbers seem to get it, be getting smaller. So our guess is that this will be increasing. And also notice that, so notice these numbers seem to be getting smaller. So our guess, which we will check with induction, is that this is a decreasing sequence. And furthermore, it's bounded above by four, which is the first term. And then it looks to be bounded below by two. So notice these things are getting closer and closer and closer to two. So let's go ahead and show that this thing is bounded first. And like I said, our claim will be that a n is between two and four. And it's not a terrible idea to work a couple more cases out just to make sure that this lower bound is correct. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and prove this by induction. So our base case 
will be the n equals one case, but the n equals one case is okay because notice a sub one is four and four is definitely between two and four if you're including four. So here we're okay. Now let's go ahead and make an induction hypothesis. So in other words, I wanna suppose for some k bigger than or equal to one, we know that a sub k lies between um, two and four. And now the trick is we wanna manipulate all parts of this inequality until we put an a sub k plus one in the inner part. So the first thing that I can do is multiply all parts of this inequality by a half. So notice multiplying by a half, so I'll just put a little half over this, will give us one is less than or equal to one half a sub k, which is less than or equal to two. Good. Now the next thing that I wanna do is add a one, because notice if I add one, then I've achieved that recursion. So let's maybe go ahead and do that. So I'll just put a plus one to mean that. And so that gives us a two in the left part. That gives us a one half a k plus one in the middle part. And that gives us a three in the right hand part. Okay, but three is most definitely less than four. And now we can just put that together, kind of forgetting about the three here, and then replacing one half AK plus one with AK plus, <clears throat> and then replacing one half AK plus one with A sub K plus one. So let's see, that will give us exactly two is less than AK plus one, which is less than four and we should have less than or equals twos here. And uh, just to reiterate what I've used it, that is that the recursion tells me that this is equal to a sub k plus one. So let's see what we've done. We've assumed this was true for the kth case and we showed that it was true for the k plus first case. So that finishes our induction proof that we have this boundedness for our sequence. So now I'll clean up the board and we'll come back and show that it's monotone. So I just got done showing that our sequence was bounded below by two and above by four. Now we're gonna show that it's monotonically decreasing. So just to point out what we need, we need to show that an plus one is less than or equal to an, and this needs to be true for all natural numbers n. So maybe we'll approach this the same way we did the other example by looking at the difference of these two terms and showing that the difference was positive. So in this case, since we want a n plus one to be less than a n, let's go ahead and look at a n minus a sub n plus one. But let's write a sub n plus one in terms of a n using the recursion. So that's exactly equal to the expression a n minus one half a n plus one. But now we can uh, distribute that minus sign through and then uh, combine like terms. That gives us one half a n minus one. But now using the fact that a n is always bigger than or equal to two, we know that this is always bigger than or equal to zero. So let's just go ahead and point that out. That's because a n is always bigger than or equal to two, which we showed when we showed this thing was bounded. So let's see what we have we have a sub n minus a sub n plus one is always bigger than or equal to zero. So from that, it follows very quickly that a sub n is always bigger than or equal to a sub n plus one. And this has got to be true for all n natural numbers because um, we did this for an arbitrary n. So we just showed this sequence was decreasing. So now it's a bounded decreasing sequence, which means by the monotone sequence theorem, it converges. And since this is a recursively defined sequence, we can actually find the limit using the algebraic properties of limits, which I'll do um, just right after I clean this up. So like I said before, by the monotone sequence theorem, uh, we know that the sequence a n converges which means it has a limit. So let's go ahead and write L for that limit. So in other words, we'll say that the limit as N goes to infinity of A sub N equals L. So now what we wanna do is notice that this implies that the limit as N goes to infinity of the sequence A sub N plus one also equals L. 
So that's generally like a good homework type exercise for a course like this. So we're, we're not gonna prove that. But now we can put those two things together along with some algebraic properties of limits, which we proved earlier on the channel to arrive at the following equation. So we have L equals this limit as N approaches infinity of A sub N plus one. But now let's replace A sub N plus one with our recursively defined uh, formula. So we've got this limit as n goes to infinity of half a sub n plus one. But then using the algebraic property of limits, we know that this is equal to one half l plus one. So we've got this nice equation for l. Notice that we can move that half l over and that gives us half l equals one. In other words, we have l equals two. We were able to do this in this case, but not in the other case, because we had this recursively defined sequence and we were able to use the algebraic properties of limits. Okay, that's a good place to stop.